I have a wonderful lesson and trick for you today that comes up at the medium and higher level of the GRE and GMAT. And it's about when they mix together linear and quadratic equations. What do I mean? Well, take the example you can see here. They're telling us that x plus y equals eight and x squared plus y squared equals 104. What does 3xy equal? Now, if you want, you can pause and have a go yourself. I'll just warn you that when I first came across this kind of problem, I tried a particular method and it took me ages and I got it wrong. So it's not so easy. Let's quickly discuss a inferior way of doing this question. And that would be substitution. Many of you might have tried this while pausing the video. You might have moved the y to the other side, for example, and got x equals eight minus y, and then substituted that into the second equation. The problem is, if you try that way, you're gonna have a really complicated equation to solve with 104 on one side and squares all over the place. Very, very difficult. So I have a massive shortcut for you. It makes the question a lot easier. Still not easy. I'm not saying this method makes it easy, but it makes it 10 times easier. And just before I tell you how to do that method, take a look at what the actual question is. It's 3xy. They want to know what 3xy is. They don't want to know what x is or what y is. They want to know specifically what the product of x times y is times three. Now bear that in mind for future questions that you'll see in this video. Anyway, what's my magical method? Well, we have a problem, don't we? We have one linear equation, and as I've written down below, linear just means in a straight line, no curves. Whereas quadratic, quad means square, it's a squared equation. The first equation is a linear equation, x plus y equals eight. The second one's quadratic, x squared plus y squared equals 104. There's a mismatch there. It makes it hard to translate. So my method begins with one simple step. We are going to square both sides of the linear equation. And watch what happens. You're gonna fall off your chair. Let's first square both sides. Notice all I've done is I've squared the left and squared the right. Can you quickly tell me what I get on each side when I square? Because more than half of my students make a mistake here. Can you quickly tell me what do I get on both sides of the equation? I really hope that you didn't say x squared plus y squared equals 64. Because when you square the left hand side of that equation, you've got to foil it out. It's a double bracket, x plus y times x plus y. Or you can just remember off by heart that when you expand the bracket, x plus y squared, you get x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. You don't just get x squared plus y squared, a very common mistake. If you don't believe me, you can try it out. Write x plus y in brackets times x plus y in brackets, because that's what x plus y squared means, and then expand the bracket and see what you get. You will end up with x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. The right-hand side is, of course, 64. But I know what you're thinking. Why on earth are we doing that? Okay, fine, we're making the linear equation a quadratic equation by squaring it. But what's the use of that? If anything, this just looks more complicated. Well, take a look at the other equation they gave us. They told us that x squared plus y squared equals 104. If you look at the second equation in the original question. And we can then substitute that in to our new equation. If x squared plus y squared equals 104, we can replace the x squared plus y squared in our new equation with 104. And that's the beauty of this method. The whole x squared plus y squared disappears and is replaced by 104. And then we have a nice simple equation. 104 plus 2xy equals 64. Taking away 104 from both sides, 2xy equals minus 40. And dividing by two, of course, xy equals minus 20. Now notice, this does not tell us what x is or what y is, but that wasn't our goal. It does tell us what x, y is, which is what we wanted. And of course, if x, y equals minus 20, 
then 3xy equals minus 60. Answer D. To recap, the crucial step was squaring both sides of the linear equation so we could cancel stuff out and be left with xy, the product, which is what we were looking for. Now, if you enjoyed that, I've got something even more fun, which is a wordy version of this question. It's still really tough, even if you know the method. So don't get intimidated, just try your best. Here's the question, it comes from my guide, and I would encourage you to pause the video, try yourself using this method. It saves a huge amount of time. In fact, I don't even believe that many students, hardly any students, could even solve it using the other way, substitution. I certainly couldn't. Anyway, have a go, and I'm now going to explain how my method works again here. The perimeter of a rectangle is 94. That's a linear equation, right? Because perimeter, you add up the four sides and it equals 94, no squaring involved. And the diagonal of the rectangle is 37. That's a quadratic equation because the diagonal you get via Pythagoras. X squared plus Y squared equals 37 squared. The two different lengths squared, it's Pythagoras. And their question is, what is the area of the rectangle? And how would you get the area of the rectangle? It's x times y. So notice again, this is the hint I told you to remember, they're asking for the product of x times y. So that's a hint to use this method. The other hint, of course, is that we have one linear equation and one quadratic equation. If all of that was too many words, let's just solve it mathematically. The perimeter of a rectangle is 94. That means 2x plus 2y equals 94. You can draw it out if you like. That doesn't help me particularly. But if you call one side x and the height, say, of the rectangle y, then you have two x's and two y's equaling 94, the perimeter. The diagonal, as we talked about, we would get using Pythagoras. x squared plus y squared equals 37 squared. You probably know the method by now. What do we do? Well, first, just quickly, we simplify the linear equation by dividing by 2. And now comes the killer blow. We are going to square both sides of that equation. What do we get? We don't get x squared plus y squared. We get the full version x squared plus y squared plus 2xy equals 47 squared. Now, there's one thing that we're going to do differently here. 47 squared is quite a hard number to work out. So I'm just going to leave it as 47 squared for now. I'm not actually going to work that out. When the numbers get really hard in the GMAT and GRE, you can often just let them go for a second. Obviously in the GRE you've got a calculator, but sometimes you might just want to leave it as 47 squared and work it out later. Either way, we're going to do what we did in the previous question and substitute. Do you remember? We know because of Pythagoras that x squared plus y squared equals 37 squared. So we can substitute that in to our new equation and now we have 37 squared plus 2xy equals 47 squared. Now remember, our goal is to find xy. So let's isolate that by taking away 37 squared from both sides. And here's where the tip about not working out comes in. This is particularly true for the GMAT where you don't have a calculator. What does that remind you of? 47 squared minus 37 squared. In fact, even for the GRE, this could be useful because they might write the answer in a different format than you're used to, in which case a calculator won't help. But what does that remind you of? 47 squared minus 37 squared. It should remind you of the difference of two squares. We've got two numbers, each of which are squared, and there's a minus sign in between. So it's the difference of two squares. 47 minus 37 in brackets, 47 plus 37 in brackets. That's the factored form of the difference of two squares. If you don't know about this formula, I've done a video called, I think, the most important quant formula you need to know, so do check it out. And this makes it so much easier to work out rather than calculating 47 squared or 37 squared. 47 minus 37 is of course 10, and 47 plus 37 is 84. 10 times 84 is 840, but the question wasn't asking for what 2xy was, it was asking for the area of the rectangle, which is simply x times y, or well, in this case, by dividing both sides by 2, xy equals 420. And I hope with that example and the previous one, I have convinced you of how elegant this shortcut is. 
and how beautiful in general maths can be, especially if you have some of the insider secrets. If you learned anything from this video, please do let me know. And regardless, have a wonderful day.